Hello, welcome back to How to Read a Poem. I'm going to do a poem called Sometimes by the British poet Sheena Po. Now, it's a poem about optimism. Now, note the A-level question is how does this poem present the idea of hope? So, it's a poem about optimism. It's a poem about hope. But it's a poem that offers not a straightforward, a jubilant, a simplistic definition of hope. It's a poem that offers, at most, a tentative definition of hope. What does tentative mean? I'll explore that in a bit. So, think about that. Hope, optimism, doesn't make sense unless we have the possibility of things failing, unless we have that other mindset of pessimism. So these two things, after all, go together. It isn't a straightforward presentation of hope. So sometimes, sometimes things don't go after all, from bad to worse. It's a straightforward statement of the theme of the poem. But note how the punctuation serves to slow down the line. Note how the line is broken up into almost a kind of enjambment style. Sometimes things don't go, comma, pause, after all, comma, line break, from bad to worse. In a sense, this is what we've been talking about. The optimism presented is qualified. It is a tentative demonstration of what optimism means. Of course, behind this sentence, we're supposed to hear the idea that, of course, sometimes things really do go bad. We understand that the world isn't tailor-made to suit our desires. The world is a place of disappointment. Sometimes things do go from good to bad. But now, the poet tries to present the opposite idea. Now think about that. Sometimes things don't go, after all, from bad to worse. Some years, Muscadel faces down frost. So it's a drawing, the analogy from the natural world. Some years, we get a good crop for making wine. Some years, the frost doesn't really get to the Muscadel. Some years, the harvest is good. Green thrives. The crops don't fail. Sometimes a man aims high and all goes well. So this transition from the natural world to the human world is again aiding the poem in building up its meaning. Sometimes the crops don't fail. Sometimes things do go for the positive. Sometimes a man aims high. Of course, we all know that disappointment in life stems from frustrated ambition. So we aim high. Of course, this is the whole idea of Shakespearean tragedy. A tragic hero like Macbeth has ambition. Macbeth aims high, but he will fall. So this is the idea that literature might teach us that sometimes the world doesn't fit our expectations. Sometimes human tragedies are built because our dreams, our desires are too much than what the world gives to us. So that's that idea behind this line. But the poet again presents the reverse idea. Sometimes all goes well. Sometimes a man aims high and everything gets fulfilled according to his or her expectations. So again, the poem is consistent in building up the opposite idea as a way of presenting what hope means, what optimism really represents in the face of a disappointing world. So the second stanza continues the argument. A people sometimes will step back from war. Of course, again, sentence by sentence, we need to hear what the poet is reacting against in the face of two world wars, in the face of escalating nuclear disasters, in an age torn by terrorism, religious extremism. Sometimes things will go well because we understand all the time it really doesn't. So people will sometimes step back from war. War can be avoided. Elect an honest man. Sometimes politics turn out for the good. Decide they care enough that they can't leave some stranger poor. So it touches the very heart of our humanity. Sometimes people will decide that they care enough to save another person, that they care enough to bring out their better side, that they can't leave some stranger poor, that they decide to demonstrate these acts of altruism. Some men become what they were born for. So the last line of the second stanza kind of echoes the last line of the first stanza, tying the poem together, giving it a bit more shape. The argument gets consistently driven home for us. Sometimes we become better than we're supposed to be. 
Sometimes the goodness in humanity outweighs the darkness in humanity. Again, when are these times? The poem remains unspecific on that point. Sometimes our best efforts do not go amiss. Sometimes we do as we are meant to. So the poem embraces a wide range of topics, switches from the macrocosm to the microcosm back to the macrocosm. We have lines that talk about politics, human affairs on a grand scale, a people who sometimes step back from war, and it transits in the third stanza into a more personal note. Sometimes our own best efforts, our own humble efforts, sometimes they don't go amiss. Sometimes people show us gratitude for the kindness we've shown them. Sometimes we do as we are meant to. Sometimes our actions really bring about desirable outcomes. Note, the word sometimes has been repeated throughout the poem, has been drummed in, it almost becomes a sort of refrain to suggest that goodness, kindness, hope, all these things are things that sometimes happen. We shouldn't lose hope. Though in the background, we understand the disappointment of life. We understand the cruelty of the world. We understand that more often than not, human beings are inclined to darkness, to cruelty, to insensitivity, to pessimism more than optimism. This is what, after all, human nature means. People can range from the good to the bad. Why are we looking at the bad? Sometimes it does us good to look at the positive aspects of our life. The sun will sometimes melt a field of sorrow that seem hard frozen. Now, the poem shifts back into a natural world. So we've gone from natural world to the human world and back to the natural world. A sort of like tying the poem together, giving it a greater sense of coherence, giving it a greater sense of unity. And of course, this tying in brings us back to the start of the poem. So as if the points of the poem get drummed into us consistently. The sun will sometimes melt a field of sorrow. Now note the phrase, a field of sorrow, blends the natural world with the human world. Sorrow is approached metaphorically. It's described as a field that the sun will sometimes melt, that it seem heart frozen. So the coldness in the human heart is likened to a frost-bitten field that the sun will melt. So again, this tying in between the natural world and the human world, it all coheres, it all comes together. This is like the last poem I did, the red and the black, trying to suggest things on the grandest scale possible. Big truths about life, big truths about the world. That's sometimes seen heart frozen, that feel the sun will sometimes melt. Note the last line, there's a pause and the poem shifts to a direct addressal of the reader. May it happen for you. The poem beautifully ends on a sort of blessing. May all these good things happen to you. Note, the word is not, it will happen to you. Keeping with the tentative presentation of hope in the whole poem. So sometimes things go for the good. Sometimes people are better than they're supposed to be. Sometimes life works out. May it happen to you. The poem, again, ends on a note of optimism, on a note of hope. It directly addresses the reader. May all these things happen to you. May you look at life in a positive way. May you approach life with the hope and the optimism that life deserves. So the poem offers its truths, not as definitive statements, because of course, it doesn't want to come across as simplistic. It doesn't want to come across as idealistic. That would be doing its truths a major disservice. So it's tentative, it's hopeful in its sense of hope. And of course, hope only makes sense because there's the risk, there's a possibility of failure. So there you go. This is how to read a poem. Thank you.